show that the set of functions, either 3x, either minus x, 2, is a linearly independent set. Note, these functions are going to span the solution space of the differential equation, y triple prime minus 2y double prime minus 3y prime equals 0. First, linearly independent. So what's it mean for our three functions to be linearly independent? Well, we start by taking all linear combinations. So we're going to take numbers, a, b, and c. We're going to take a times e to the 3x plus b times e to the minus x plus c times 2. We set that equal to 0. Then we solve to find all a, b, and c where this equation's true. If I can find a, b, and c with one of them non-zero, we call our set linearly dependent. If the only solution is a equals b equals c equals zero, okay, we're guaranteed at least that one, then we'll have linearly independent. Now what does this really mean? Here, we're gonna have, if you're linearly independent, then that's gonna mean that this set here can't be squeezed down any further without losing information. So think of it this way, if I threw away the two, then the resulting set of linear combinations is gonna be smaller. We're gonna miss some solutions if I throw away two. Another way to look at this, suppose I could find a solution A, B, C, where one of them is non-zero. So in this case, let's try A equals one, B equals minus one, C equals minus one. Okay, now that's definitely not true, but just assume it for concreteness sake. Then we put that into our equation and what comes out? I'll get e to the 3x equals e to the minus x plus two. So I didn't need to have e to the 3x in my original set. If I'd thrown this away, we could have recovered e to the 3x by taking that sum, and then we get everything back. So the idea is linear dependence says there's some redundancy in your original set. To show the linear independence of n solutions of an nth order linear ODE, we use the Ronskian. The Ronskian is defined as, we're gonna form a matrix, I put our solutions in the top row, derivatives in the second row, second derivatives in the third row. Okay, if we have bigger order than three in this case, we would just keep taking derivatives until I have a square matrix. Then we take the determinant. So that's what straight bars mean. The theorem I invoke, our set of solutions is linearly independent if and only if the Ronskian is non-zero at the points where our solution space is defined. To get the Ronskian in our special case, we load in our solutions, take their derivatives, then second derivatives. I take the determinant. I have two ways I can do this. First way, we're gonna multiply down each right diagonal, sum, and then subtract off when we get when we multiply down each left diagonal. Now, we have zeros here, so most of our terms are gonna vanish. So I'll just pick out the two terms that don't vanish. The one to the right will be coming off of the two, then we hit the three e to the three x and the e to the minus x. That gives me a six e to the two x. Going to the left, again, I'll be off the two. So the minus signs, because we're gonna subtract, they'll cancel. Then I'll have 18 e to the two x. We add, we get 24 e to the two x. We check our theorem. The condition is, if your Ronskian is non-zero, where your solution space is defined, then you're linearly independent. In this case, we have 24 e to the two x. E to any number is non-zero. In fact, it's always positive. So here, the condition of the theorem satisfied and my set is linearly independent. Another way to get the determinant to check our work, so this is from linear algebra, I'm gonna use a cofactor expansion. What's the idea here? You pick your favorite row or column. In this case, your favorite row or column is the one with the most zeros in it. So I'm gonna pick column three. You're gonna take term by term and then add up. So the idea is gonna be I take the first term, my two, record it. We're gonna multiply by minus one raised to the row plus column number. Okay, in this case, we have row one, column three, so it's a four, so the minus sign goes away. Then what we do is we cancel out 
the row and column that our two is in, and then take the determinant of what's left over. So that's just going to be multiplying down this diagonal, subtract off that diagonal. When we do that, we wind up with our 24e to the 2x. And again, that's never going to be equal to 0, so we get linear independence. Now, this problem's mostly an exercise in using the Ronskian. To actually show the linear independence in this case, it's much easier just to go by foot. What do I mean by that? So we throw away all the linear algebra formalism. What do we do? We're going to write down our equation of linear independence. So it's a e to the 3x plus b e to the minus x plus c times 2 equals 0. If two things are equal, I take their derivatives. What comes out stays equal. So in this case, go through and do derivatives term by term. I'll have 3a e to the 3x minus b e to the minus x plus 0, and that's equal to 0. I do the derivative again. So this is where the second derivatives come in. And then what do I get? 9a e to the 3x plus b e to the minus x plus 0 equals 0. All right. To get to the Ronskian definition, this is just pulling things apart with linear algebra. So the idea would be I can rewrite these three equations here as a matrix vector equation in the form, okay, it looks like this. So if you've had linear algebra, this should be familiar. And then the linear algebra theorem says we'll have non-zero solutions to this equation only if we get the determinant of this matrix here equal to zero, and that's going to have to hold for all x. So the idea is since I'm working with functions, all right, if I can find one x or a few x where I get this equal to zero, that's not enough. It has to be for all x. That's telling you that there's a relation among the actual functions themselves, not a relation among your functions at a few points. All right, we don't need all this. Let's see how we can get this in a different way. So we just follow our nose. So if I take a look at these equations here, you'll note if I add second equation to third equation, these middle terms are going to cancel out. So we'll get 12a e to the 3x equals 0. Now we can divide by 12, and I can also divide by e to the 3x without penalty. Okay, e to the 3x is always non-zero, so dividing by that function's just fine. That gives me a equals 0. Then if you take a look at row 2, okay, well if a is equal to 0, then I'm left with minus b e to the minus x. Okay, take the minus sign out, and then again, we can divide through by e to the minus x, because e to the minus x, again, is never equal to 0. So we get b equals 0. And then if I go to our top row, a is 0, b is equal to 0. So I'm left with 2 times c equals 0. And that means c is 0. So the only way I can get these three equations satisfied all at once is if a equals b equals c equals 0.